Well, the time has finally arrived. I've been dreading this. We're gonna have to pull this back glass and this rubber out of this car and assess all of the rust damage. Well, no time like the present to get started. Tool for this. All right, step one to remove the back window from a W126 Mercedes is to remove the back seat. I've already pulled the uh, seat bottom out. It's got two uh, levers on either side. You just move them to the side and lift it up and set it to the side. It's over in the corner of the room. Uh, next, we're going to remove the uh, seat back. I've already uh, disconnected it from uh, the rear up here where it connects to the uh, the hat rack and there's three bolts down below they're eight millimeter anyway so I've, I've got it nice and loose now so I've got to lift this out of here you want to be careful you've got these little metal uh, feet down below you don't want to scratch anything and get yourself something nice and soft for the top of the car to uh, place your seat on or if you have another location that uh, works but for me top of the car works so let's go ahead and get the seat out of here and then we'll move on with the rest of the project all right, well, that was very nearly uh, the easiest thing I, I ever did, really. Uh, no, it wasn't. It's kind of a pain, really, <laughs> especially by yourself. All right, we've got some insulation, and we've got, uh, looks like we got some dust coming out of the, uh, the seat cushion material. That's what that, I believe that's what that brown stuff is. Uh, okay, up next, we have to remove the C-pillar covers. All right, up next, uh, remove that small screw. And uh, the LED lighting on the camera always shows up the most minute details. Of course, this is hidden by the, the seat back, so you really can't see that. That screw is beneath some piece of vinyl there. That really tells me that the rear glass has been out of this car before. And uh, can I get that screw out of there with one hand? Probably not. Let me get that out of there. Stand by one second. Ah, smaller screwdriver is in order because the head of this Phillips is quite small for some reason. I'm not sure why. Huh. Not a whole lot to that. All right, we'll put that in the floorboard. The uh, next bit is to simply remove the uh, rear C pillar, and uh, <laughs> and it says to do that and basically pull it forward oh boy that was hard all right how much coaxing oh we have to disconnect the wires for the light silly all right that's those are on there pretty tight let me get two hands on that all right i got the wires loose and that was about the easiest thing i ever did way easier than pulling that seat back out all right i will show you this the c pillar is broken some goofball uh, before me look at that see that's cracked right there it's cracked right there. It's got this huge piece has come off. This thing is just in horrible condition. So that means we'll have to pull out the magic juice that we've been using to repair all of the rest of the plastic on this car. Before we reinstall this, we'll have to rejuvenate it and uh, reinforce all of this. So uh, since we definitely have to take it off the car, so next let me, let me go ahead and uh, remove the seat belt. All right, we've got to disconnect the seat belt from the bottom with a 17 millimeter. That was easy. And we'll slip that out of there and remove this from the car and set it someplace safe so we can repair it later on. Uh, okay, well, hmm. Hey, look at that. That looks good right there. All right, let's move on. All right, so the uh, screw is beneath the trim, and whoever took this out of here before uh, did kind of a hack job of it and did it poorly. So we should be able to coax this out of here without too much problem. Yeah, there we go. 
All right, so now that that is loose, uh, let's disconnect the safety belt from below. Let's see, all right, now let's uh, disconnect our wires again. I'm gonna need two hands for that. All right, now we're all, we should all, we should be freed up. We, that was the light dropping. So this, you just pull this forward to get it out. It slips back in that little channel right there. And then we'll uh, get the safety belt out. Don't forget our light. I like these little lights. They're neat. That little lens like that. Those are cool. Let's take a look at the state of this one. We have a little crackage right there. I've got actually have a lot of crackage. Just look, look at that. Who is the ham-fisted? Never mind. Be nice. Don't be negative. It wasn't me. And there's the screw. So some person, I don't know what they were doing, but I'm going to be, I'm going to be gracious and say they probably lost their temper. All right, so let's take this uh, next C pillar and we'll set him, we'll do him face to face like that so there's no scratch, there's no scratching involved. All right, the uh, Mercedes service manual says to remove the screw at both the left and right ends of this center panel here this blue strip you see those screws do not exist on this car uh, they simply do not exist so i'm going to make an assumption that says certain models have those screws and certain models don't mine does not up next we're going to gently coax the dome light out of its restraint all right so this is what it looks like if you have never taken one of these out. Here's your spring end. You push in with your screwdriver like that and you push in on that. And this end slips downward. And the other end has your wires on it and you simply unplug them. All right. We should be able to take this screw out right here. And that's going to follow my head. All right, let me put the camera down. All right, next step on the agenda is to unscrew the fastening nut for the hat rack from the direction of the trunk. You can see this little recess here. So I'm not too sure what's going on there. That's the only recess I see. And you can see that there is a capture nut there and it has nothing screwed into it. You also see a plastic tab. I'm gonna make an assumption that says that is part of the hat rack or the rear shelf. And if we look over here, we see rust and we see another one of those capture nuts with nothing in it and we see another one over there with nothing in that so i don't know what went in there maybe it was an option for this car so i'm going to make an assumption that says let's go ahead and remove the two rear compartments here there and there that one has the uh, first aid kit that one has the first aid kit and that one i can't recall what's in there i think it's just storage Let's go ahead and try to get those compartments out first and see, just see where that leads us because the service manual is leading me astray. All right, I'm just going to proceed cautiously and start taking things apart until I uh, figure out the, uh, the next step. I'm going to take this little latch off right here just because it looks like it might be a good thing to do. Hmm, okay. Well, we'll set that aside. There are, you know, I'm guessing nobody's ever used this compartment. <laughs> There's some odd looking sticky something right there. I'm not sure what that was. Maybe there's something under here. There we go. And what have we found? Nothing! We have found nothing! There's nothing in there. I right, will set that aside. Interesting. Well, let's do the same thing for the first aid compartment. I'll be right back. All right, pretty much same deal there. Took the latch out and removed the first aid kit. Never been used. I don't think anybody ever used this first aid kit in one of these cars. Look back at the very first video. I think it was the very first video that I posted for this car 
and you will uh, see a, an up-close examination of the contents of that first aid kit if you are so inclined. Maybe since I took those two long screws out, maybe I can just lift it up and pull it out. I don't know. Let me, let me fiddle with it for a few minutes and we'll figure it out. All right, so if you lift this up and then you start fiddling around, you'll see that, that this compartment is separate from the top. And same thing over here. I'm wondering if I need to disconnect the, the rear brake light first. Hmm. Okay, we got the uh, cover off of the rear taillight. I've never taken one of these things off before. But uh, here's the cover. And there was these two you know, plastic flanges that go over either side. And I, you know how plastic is. I was extremely, extremely gentle. And they just they just disintegrated both of them so i'll have to figure i'll have to figure something else out there there may be an aftermarket one i'm not sure you know this is an 84 they didn't mandate these lights until 1985 as i recall this is an aftermarket deal i think that the original owner had this added because the power wires from this down in the trunk, they kind of, they go into the wiring loom in a fashion that is not stock. I can tell that it was added later on. So I'm not sure if this was a Mercedes part. It, it certainly does look very high quality, but uh, it was added on after the fact. So either I'll find a way to keep it, put a LED light in it, and then we'll uh, do something about this. You know, hey, you know, we're pretty good at plastic repair on this channel, so... Yeah, we can fix that. Anyway, so what you got there is these two spring-loaded uh, little clips here. So if we take these two clips and pull them down, there we go. Like that, and that pulls away from the the mount, and I should be able to turn my light on so you can see. Yeah, there's the two wiring connectors there. All right, let's uh, stand by. Let me pull those off of there. All right, we got our light out of there. Okay, here's the procedure. You take this thing off, and of course you're going to break it. And then you pull these little things down here, and then you slide that off, take your wires off. Now, the wires, what we'll do is we'll snake the wires down below the uh, the bottom of the, of the hat rack, and we should be able to pull it out now. All right, got some of these lights turned off to avoid the glare in the glass but uh, can't avoid it all so i believe we're free folks uh we're just going to pull this uh back dash out of here and move on All right, something was tugging on it. I was trying to figure out what it was. And it looks like it's the, the insulation that goes over the metal is sort of bunched up underneath this, which is not a huge deal. Not a huge problem the uh, it's just the installation was bunching up underneath there up next I think I'll disconnect the speakers and the light so I'll need to pull those wires out of there all right we got her pulled out of there 
be a good time for to give this thing a good cleaning, wouldn't it? There's our compartment doors, and of course the speakers. The speakers come out with the hat rack, as they call it. So you see that piece of insulation there that was hanging up and keeping me from pulling it out. So I had to, and of course that one there. Of course it came completely loose. It was adhered to the underside of the hat rack with you know 37 year old glue. So so let me set this thing aside in a safe place, and I'll be right back. <clears throat> All right, we've got the uh, hat rack out of there. And I'm doing an initial assessment here. Um, first glance, it uh, doesn't look like we've got much of a problem here. I don't think this is rust. Yeah, that has a, a squishy texture to it. Now over there, you can see where rust is is running down from the inside of the rear window seal. Let's turn our light on. There we go. That's a little better. So that looks like a pretty nasty spot. That's probably a big old hole there waiting on us. There's another spot. And it looks like one is starting over there. And we have this area here. So we probably have, you know, a rust down in that channel all the way around. It does, I mean, it looks like some, some drippage right here, but it seems to stop right there. And what we have here, what do we have here? This seems like a, um, a rubberized coating. It's, you know, clearly it's dusty back here, but it seems like a rubberized coating here. Okay, worst case scenario, let's talk about that. Uh, worst case scenario is this entire thing was rusted up solid or rusted up and has holes on it and they put this coating on here to cover it up i don't know i'm just that's just a guess i really have no idea i need to get the trunk lid off I need to get the window out to really make an assessment but for right now i'm hoping that really all we have is the rust damage in the window channel itself because we could probably fix that without having to remove the whole channel while we're at it here we might as well disconnect the rear window defogging wiring loom one screw two screws all right let's put those in a safe place all right we're ready to take this window out of this car folks next step is to push back the ceiling frame whatever that is at the vehicle interior side by means of a plastic wedge behind body flange of window opening. Seems Greek to me. Then carefully push rear window from inside in outward direction. Man, I would have never figured that out. And remove. All right, so <laughs> we're, we're about ready to take the glass out of this old car. So uh, enough of that uh, hammy nonsense. We are ready, folks. I think the first thing we're going to do is prepare a place to set the glass once it's been removed from the car because the top of the car is, well, <laughs> there's no more space up there. So I do have a couple of sets of uh, saw horses here. The service manual recommends getting yourself a sort of a convex or curved surface on which to place your windshield. I think really what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up a couple of saw horses and uh, get some plywood laid across them and come up with something that is automotive glass friendly and then once we have that set up we'll have a nice place to set our glass after we've removed it from the car all right folks i think we're going to call this part one of our rear window channel rust repair video series what I'm gonna to try to do for the next few days is do a little bit of work on this project and provide more content more often. Usually I've tried to put out a video per week in general, but I think with this one, I'd kind of like to speed it up a little bit. Don't hold my feet to the fire on that. Uh, I may run into complications, but for now I'm going to try to put out more videos more often on this rust repair job. I appreciate you guys stopping by the channel. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe if you'd like to be notified whenever i release a new video don't forget to click that little bell down below you know where it is thanks a lot for stopping by guys take it easy